Yo and we. Yo, this is set with set and key media, man. I'm back with another one for y'all. Today we're about to get into this Sherwood Grood. And I think y'all gonna like this one. Cause this man was cooking. I think every state needs a sheriff like him. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being with us today. He intended to have a gunfight, and we gave him a gunfight. We don't choose to shoot people. They choose for us to shoot them. And if you choose for us to shoot at you, we're going to shoot at you a lot. That's a guarantee. In your mind, how do you process taking this kind of an approach? Well, really, I don't get much pushback at all because the overwhelming majority of the people of the community support me. Well, he pointed the dead deputy's gun at a SWAT team. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to get shot. A lot. You're going to get shot so much you can read the Sunday New York Times through you. You have no sympathy for that man. Zero. Death penalty. How do you feel about the death penalty? Well, I like the death penalty. We should have, in, instead of an electric chair, we oh, should shit. have an electric oh, bench. Bro. So we can put them all on the bench together and my you know, man. light them up all at once. It feeds my soul. It makes me feel good when my detectives, who are the very best, arrest child predators. The mere fact that they didn't have someone on the roof of a building 148 yards to the lectern where the president's speaking is raw insanity. Let me prepare you for today's podcast. At the beginning, yeah, you're going to say, uh, I'm sorry, uh, who is a sheriff, uh, a Judd? Uh, why would he have a sheriff on the podcast? But you got to realize, I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. There's a lot of people I'll sit down with. I'm excited about this one. I'll tell you why. Go on YouTube and just type in Sheriff Judd, okay? I can't tell you how many videos he's got with millions of views on top of millions of views. This, this man, if he wanted to, he can stop being a sheriff and start a YouTube channel. He'd be the Mr. Beast of Sheriffs. He could, he could really do that if he wanted to. However, he's out of this county called Polk County. It's in, right in the middle of Florida. And there are certain cities you can drop names and it puts the fear of a life in the criminal's you know, head. This is one of those. If you go and say, do anything, I'm going to call Sheriff Judd, they run away. That's what his reputation is. Let me give you a little bit about Damn. his background so you kind of have an idea. 1972. Right, man, for the job, he said, bro, we told criminals that that boy's name, they got out of town. He becomes the dispatcher. He was under 20 years old. He needed his father's help to get ammunition because he was under 21. At 27, he becomes a captain, supervising 44 employees, of which every one of them were older than him. Later on, he becomes sheriff in 04, re-elected in 08, 12, 16. I don't think he got re-elected in 2020 because nobody opposed him. And then in 2020 or 2021, he was invited. Hey, you know you're doing your job right when you go unopposed. <laughs> when nobody want to go against you, nobody want to embarrass themselves to challenge you. Yeah, you're doing your job right. But the president to, ser uh, to serve a three-year term on coordinating council on juvenile justice and delinquency prevention. When I say president, I mean President Trump at the time. And uh, he's been married since 1972, which, by the way, when you think about this business, it's very, very hard to be married for 52 years. Go ask anybody that's a cop or a firefighter or should just ask him. See what that life looks like. It's very difficult. So, Sheriff Grady Judd. Let's ask any man. Marriage is tough. Any man would say that, period. But it's great to have you on the podcast. It is my honor to be here today with you. Trust me, the honor is mine. And I think the audience is gonna I think the best way to start off is the following. Let, let's just play a clip, Rob, if you could. And just to kind of give you an idea why, you know, people respect this man as much as they do. This is gonna give you a little bit of a glimpse on how he is when he deals with the media. Rob, if you had it, go ahead and play the clip. But we have received information in social media that some of the criminals were going to take their criminal conduct into the neighborhoods. I would tell them if you value your life, you probably shouldn't do that in Polk County. Because the people of Polk County like guns. They have guns. I encourage them to own guns. And they're going to be in their homes tonight with their guns loaded. And if you try to break into their homes to steal, to set fires, 
I'm highly recommending they blow you back out of the house with their guns. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Bro. This is why I like them. Because I heard him speak before. And ever since I heard this man speak, I'm like, yo, this man is low-key kind of funny. He's like, he's so dead ass, it's funny. <laughs> so, so, so you say something like that. And, and you'll typically get some pushback from local media, right? In your mind, how do you process taking this kind of an approach? Well, really, I don't get much pushback at all because the overwhelming majority of the people, the community, support me. Even the media. Even the media. My now, man! Occasionally, someone will say something like, he shouldn't have said that. And I go, I don't care what you think. Yeah. You know, my job is to serve the people. And you know what's really interesting about mm. that? When, when that occurred, I got millions of hits nationwide. And I would tell you over 99% of them, really over 99% of them were positive because people understood that. In fact, about a month later, I had one of the Black Lives Matter bosses come see me about another issue. They were mm -hmm. concerned if I would help out on a murder investigation in another jurisdiction. In Florida or outside? In Florida. Okay. And when they stood up to leave. Yo, Black Lives Matter pulling up to him and be like, hey, yo, help us out. Yeah, he, he does his job well. Eve. And he ain't racist. And he wa was walking out of the door. He turned and said, we heard your message the other day. I said, good. I'm glad you did. So the bottom line is, I like peaceful protest. That's a mark of our society. But you get on social media and you say you're going to break into people's houses you and take what? what you want, mm -hmm. take yours. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's not working. I mean, I got a lot of things I want to ask you about. I mean, you got squatter laws. You got stuff that's going on in New York and California. What happened with the assassination, the recent shooting that took place with Sonia Massey. I want to get your perspective on a lot of this stuff. But where does your conviction come from to speak like that? You you got, I believe, what was the award that you got? The, what was it? The 2022 Faith Patriot, Faith-Based Patriot of the Award? I mean, maybe I'm not getting it right. It was something like that I was given to you, right? So there is an element of faith. But then there's the element of you crossed the line. I mean, you even had a story early on, right, when they took out one of your deputies and the K-9, if I'm not mistaken, this could have been an 06. Williams was the gentleman's last name. And then the, the, the criminal came and shot him from the back, if I'm not mistaken, shot him six or eight times. And then you guys shot this guy. 68 ah, ah. times. And when the media asked you, why shoot him 68 times? Your answer was. We ran out of bullets. We would have shot him more. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from the heart, and it comes from the soul, and it comes from what the overwhelming majority of the people are thinking. This guy shot and killed our canine. Oh. Shot and killed our canine handler. So pretty much imagine some dude walking up, pretty much killing your friend, unaliving your friend and your friend's dog. What's going to be your reaction? Shot the backup deputy, then took the dead canine handler's firearm you ran what? into the woods city police came to back us up shot at two of them and happened to miss them well the <laughs> next day we had the area surrounded the next morning when we had daylight we had a SWAT team walk shoulder to shoulder through this wooded area in order to find him mm -hmm. well he pointed the dead deputy's gun at a SWAT team what do you think's going to happen mm -hmm. you're going to get shot a lot you're going to get shot so much you can read the sun yeah. in the New York Times through you. And that's what happened. Hey, yo, to make a joke about that is wild as hell. Hey, we're going to shoot you so much time you can read a newspaper through your ass. And you're gonna pop okay, okay. I, I feel the threat. Feel 68 it. times. 68 times. In your mind, you're not even flinching. We, we did it right. We should have done more. Well, that's yeah. how quick it happens. And, and that happens in a matter of a second and a half. I mean, you're pointing a deputies gun at a SWAT team it it's over ah, 60 ah. from how many people that shot him oh there was probably eight or ten so he got shot off from a bunch of different angles from I'm a bunch sure of different people sure right. he did. okay but but going back to it so in your mindset like you know a lot of times when you go I don't know if you're a football guy I don't know if you're a sports guy but obviously you're a diehard hockey fan based on the conversation we had prior to this that's a lot of sarcasm there but if you're a football guy you'll say you know 
Well, you know, Bill Walsh is the guy that produced the most coaches, assistant coaches that went to the Super Bowl. He produced this guy and that guy and this guy. Lombardi never produced anybody. Even though they call it the Lombardi Trophy, Bill Walsh is the guy that built the most people, and that's who should be known as the greatest. And then you'll see certain habits when you work under somebody, right? I have a lot of my dad's traits. He's a hardworking guy, character tough, tells it the way it is, but I got it from him so that my conviction comes from there. Where does where your conviction come from to be able to speak as confidently as you do? Well, first and foremost, I've been in this business a long time. And I've watched what I call traditional police administration publicly fail time after time after time. It failed just the other day, and we'll probably talk about that. But the biggest failure is not being honest with a community and not shooting straight and not telling them exactly like it is. If my folks mess up, we dress up, fess up, and fix up. We admit it. We screwed this up. We'll fix it, and we'll fix it immediately. But I tell exactly what it is that's happening. If we have a shooting in the streets or a murder, and there's a lot of police activity around, I don't say, well, um, excuse me, um, <clears throat> we're gathering the information, and we're not sure exactly <laughs> what happened, and uh, as soon as we complete this investigation, we'll be back with you in three or four months. People don't want to hear that. Yeah. That's crap. Are you hinting at something? That's baloney. Yeah, well, you, well, you kind of are, though, right? That's yeah. kind of what you're saying. So, t okay, so I tell them straight up. I'll say, look. Nah, there'll be people who actually politicize certain cases. They'll be like, oh, no, no, I need this to get reelected. So we're going to hold this out. We're going to hold this, like, pedo. We're going to hold this unalive route until, you know, I get elected. Because, you know, I, I want to make it look good. I got to make it look sexy, okay, man, for the people. I start out the press conference. Yeah, like that. it's on social media. They cut it out of mainstream media. I say, look, the information I give you today is brand new information. Okay, it's the best information that we know at this time. <laughs> it's not only subject to change; it probably will change. But here's what we know at this early stage of the investigation, and I tell it all, brothers and sisters. I tell it all, and you know what? Hmm. People accept that. And then as the investigation goes along, I come back and modify it later because I'm not hiding anything. I have nothing to hide. We had an emergency here. We responded to the emergency. You know, they shot at us. We shot at them or two people shot at each other and we have somebody in custody. We always want to peacefully take everyone into custody so that we can take them into the criminal justice system. If we have to shoot someone or shoot at someone, we don't make that determination. They make us shoot them. That's not our determination. That's the bad guy's determination. Wow. But I say it publicly. And people understand the truth. What they don't understand is obfuscating, lying, standing up in front of the media after somebody has just shot at President Trump two or three days later and go, oh, I really don't know about that. Oh, we've got that under investigation. The whole world's throwing the BS flag on that. You know something you can tell us. So, so let's go there. Let's go there. You took him to that congressional hearing. They said, oh, you couldn't tell us nothing. It was like, look, bro. We understand we failed the perimeter. We understand we failed to protect the president. But we can't tell you. We can't tell you anything, though. It's up to the FBI. So the assassination attempt. At this point, we've seen so many different clips. But another clip came out today. I'll show you this one as well. I don't know if you've seen this one that came out today with the cops walking around knowing minutes before. And then you hear the shooting. We heard ta-ta-ta, three, then ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, the five, and then the last bullet that we hear. Just open-ended question to you from having been in this space, 50-plus years you've been in this space. You've been serving since you were... 1972, you're born March 10th, 1954. So you've been in this business for what, 51, 52 years, give or take? 52 years 50, last week. 52, congratulations thank to you. you. Thank you for your service. Open-ended, what are your thoughts? When you saw the assassination attempt, Secret Service, them getting up, all the different stories coming out, what are your thoughts on it? Well, first and foremost, you must understand that, that I have been the guy who told a SWAT team you have the green light shoot. Mm. So... I have been the one that ordered people shot by a SWAT team. Can you be specific? When was that? What was the situation? Oh, my situation? goodness. There's been more than once. But man, basically, my man said, look, man, I didn't not really order the hits, but, hey, I didn't have some, I didn't have some people put down. It's like, And he'd have been over the phone saying, yep, drop him. One time, a, a man went into a restaurant in Fort Meade and shot 
his he shot it's it's been oh, 20, 35 years ago and he shot he killed one or two people and shot a couple more and then he <laughs> hostages and then he shot at us after after we got there we tried to take him peacefully into custody that's not what he wanted so we shot him graveyard dead that was his choice so so i've been there and done that when i shot him graveyard dead is crazy <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, we try to take him in peacefully, but he wanted to leave in a body bag. We wanted to take him out in cuffs. He chose body bag. That ain't our fault, <laughs> according to the police. I saw the very first television interview of the shooting of President Trump. I knew immediately they'd screwed it up. Because regardless of what else happened, regardless of the different media perspectives, and they were just talking to whoever, the mere fact. Hopefully the mic sound a little better. That they didn't have someone on the roof of a building 148 yards to the lectern where the president's speaking is raw insanity. That's not just a failure. That's raw insanity. There's also a water tower that you don't have to be on that water tower as long as no one else is on it and you've got somebody at the base of the water tower. Now, as time goes on, there's failure after failure after failure after failure. But when you put political people in charge of professional law enforcement agencies, you get political decisions instead of professional law enforcement decisions. Well, I can tell you, wake up, America. The public doesn't want political decisions when it comes to saving lives. They want professional decisions, and that's what saves lives. Unpack that if you could. Well, first, political decisions, political decisions is you've put somebody in charge of the Secret Service. They're a political appointment. Where did they come from? What was their background? Ooh. Did they have the ability? To yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's pretty much touching on the DEI hire. He's like, yeah, why is that female the well, director of the what Secret Service? And she used to be what director of security for Coca-Cola. Like how she go from protecting inanimate objects to people like that's what I want to know to do that job and the job is at that level you're not going to go out there and train but you're gonna say let me see the training curriculum I know for a fact following the rules the Secret Service is well versed well versed and I underscore of doing the appropriate security on an event like that so what happened that day where did the failure start well, first and foremost, it started at the very top when she started dancing around and not publicly saying. All right, so she left the Secret Service in 2019 and served as a PepsiCo and served at PepsiCo as Senior Director of Global Security. Yeah, she was making a bag. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, listen, there's a full-throated investigation a underway, and I can tell you if I know nothing else. We've had mistakes occur because no one was on the roof securing it. And we in our county have worked with Secret Service over and over and over again. They're remarkably professional, and there's never been a time when we wouldn't have somebody on that roof. So when you've got an appointed person that's the CEO, mm -hmm. if you will, of the Secret Service, mm -hmm. and they don't know exactly what's going on i mean when you have the president of the united states or the past president of the united states or potentially the future president of the united states that you are providing security for you have to make sure you've done everything exactly correct and they didn't okay so october 12 2016 if i'm not mistaken president trump came and gave a speech in 2016 at lakeland which is 25 miles away from uh, polk county were you on that uh, were you working on that event or no lakeland is in our county so were you on that i personally wasn't but our people would have your been people that. were okay Absolutely. perfect so 2016 he's coming in he's not president yet or was he president already october no he was not president he was yet, not right? president so he's campaigning and that's october 12th that's two three weeks before so it's like peak of 
intensity. Her, him and Hillary are going back and forth. So that's your county. Yes. You were not there. What is the protocol of Secret Service collaborating with local SWAT, local police department? H how does that relationship work? Yes. Out? My, my SWAT team was there. Okay. My, my detail was there. Whatever the Secret Service asked for, the Lakeland Police detail was there. We meet with Secret Service in advance. They send advance teams in. The, right. uh, the president, as we know, who was then running for president, met at the airport. So the Secret Service is in charge of all of that, and they tell us, okay, we'll take this position, you take this position. They go so far and I was just talking about my SWAT commander who's been on some of these. Hey, if you're on this roof, don't take your rifle because we've got rifles over here and we don't want the crossfire with high powered rifles. You use your handgun. So mm -hmm. the Secret Service comes down to the training and the prep to tell you what kind of gun to have depending on your assignment in these particular areas. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, they're very good at that. So for that to be a total flop, there has you've got to say, where did the problem begin? It always ends with the CEO. And why didn't she immediately fly there that day and start immediately taking control of that situation and getting answers. Why didn't she do that? The only one that can answer that is her. Yeah, it's even crazy how we kind of said that. They kind of had to work with all the police around, state police, local police, like county police. Like It didn't matter. They had to have all the police force working under the, well, Secret Service, and it doesn't look like that was, that was it. Because when everything went down, everybody was all kerfuffled running around everywhere. But what happens in traditional police environment, the first thing they do is find a hole to dive in. And while they're diving in the hole, they think, well, who all can I blame this on? Well, the reality of it is that doesn't work. No one is perfect. No matter how well that protocol went that day, something can go bad. True. People understand when you take responsibility and you make immediate improvements. Mm -hmm. Or when you mess something up, say, we messed this up. And we didn't see any of that in the beginning because that's not how the federal government operates. Okay, so you're saying when the Secret Service comes, they'll have a communication with the local police department Absolutely. and SWAT. And at the time, the uh, uh, director of Secret Service in 2016 was Joseph Clancy, who was appointed by Obama, I believe. So it's not like he's a conservative guy that was appointed, right. but he stayed off on Trump as well a little bit, and then he replaced him. This is what the local SWAT team just said when they were interviewed by ABC, Sheriff Judd, and they asked him, did the Secret Service reach out to speak to you, SWAT? Here's the answer they gave. And again, this isn't Fox News. This is ABC. Go for it. We were supposed to get a face-to-face -face briefing with the Secret Service snipers um, whenever they arrived, and that never happened. So I think that that was probably a pivotal point where I started thinking things were wrong because that never happened, and we had no communication oh, with the Secret oh, Service. You had no communication with the Secret Service at all on that Saturday? Not until after the shooting. Wow. And by then, really? it was too late. How do you process this? That's a failure with a capital F. And here's what I know. Our team works with, does prep in advance, and our team is simply the very best. Secret Service is the very best. I've never been involved with a Secret Service and a Secret Service operation that we didn't have con conversations down to the absolute minutia. Can you be specific with that? Well, exactly. It, like which guns? do you carry for this particular assignment? Okay, the feds have one radio system. We have a different radio system. Former president, and he draws bigger audience than he did back then. If you were in charge of this operation here, how differently would you have handled? If I can get your attention on this video, Rob, please play this clip. They've already identified he's up there. Fucking building right now. Yeah. 
There's something going on in this building. Oh my god. What There's somebody in this building. Around? And it's not easy. The point of this clip going for two minutes is you're hearing him give the speech. While cops are aware, they're running around. People are worried like something's happening. I'm weak, though. Not my host, though. It's about to happen in a few seconds. This is now almost two minutes. My guys, take a look at the Take a look at the arrow. It's about to happen. Red arrow. Right? So that's what I love. This is a political point, and that comes right from the government service. Comes right out of border control. Take a look at that. So that arrow is the lowest. People are panicking. Make yourself small, bro. I don't know what's going on. How many mis- seeing, everybody was running around looking all kind of concerned going like yo we see him up there the cops see him up there but they're not gonna go up there and just i don't know arrest them or just shoot them at least stakes out of protocol you know proper training for an event where the president's coming to town how, how many different mistakes and approach you see here well i haven't found anything right yet okay it's all wrong and right. I've heard that they had up to an hour and a half that at, at, at some point they actually saw the guy take out a range finder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Golf, well, golf range finder. A golf range right. finder. At that moment in time, we'd run that guy down. And he would have been with us mm-hmm. having a conversation till the president left. We, he would not have ever gotten on the roof. But... If we didn't find him, if he got lost in a crowd, I didn't see a crowd there, wouldn't have made any difference. We would have been on the roof ahead of time. We'd have been on the roof when we started staging and prepping for that event. So there wouldn't have been an empty roof for him to get on. And I look at that and I'm mortified. I'm absolutely mortified. That's why I do think it was a setup because, yeah, I'm mortified too, like how was he able to get away with this? Like, even if this sheriff right here is breaking it down to how he'd have just had that shit shut down, you're telling me the next sheriff in that city or the CIA director or the, I don't know, or, or, the, or the head agent in charge couldn't think of the same thing? Like, y'all just happened just to leave that opening there. I don't know, man. I don't know. That don't seem too correct to me. But look, man. Let's get right into our sponsors, man, because are you looking to help the next generation in understanding and engaging in the Bible? The Keystone Bible is the most complete graphic adaption of the Bible ever done, and it is the perfect product for helping young adults read and dive into and interact with the Bible. This graphic Bible helps young adults understand the historical timeline of the Bible, learn about both well-known and lesser-known characters and Orthodox Christian teachings. Top comic artists from Keystone Comics have created a stunning 2,000 plus page graphic novel to capture the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The entire Old Testament and New Testament is available either as a hardcover trilogy or a six soft cover volumes. With the Keystone Bible, young adults can read scripture from cover to cover and many times retain the content longer than traditional texts. Find this, find this, and more exciting products at KeystoneComics.com. Let's get right with God. Well, thank you. Fight. You saw police officers that didn't know what they were doing. 
Now, that police officer on the ground doesn't have a ladder, but did you see him calling for a ladder? Did he, did you see him pulling a car up so he can climb up on the roof and, and, and get onto the roof of the building? Nobody reacted. It's mortifying the entire event. Okay, so question for you. You're a pretty straight-up guy. I don't think you're going to be somebody that's going to sugarcoat it. So when you see something like this, uh, uh, you, I think you have two sons and 13 grandkids, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Okay, Dang. congratulations to Thank you. I don't know how you turn two, two to 13, but that's fantastic. So my man. Have kids, one of the things they teach you is the gift of, you know, not telling you the whole story where you as a father has to sit there and be like, I think you're full of shit today. Oh, you know what? I actually believe him, right? You're just kind of processing. Kids, we did it as well when we were kids. You know, some of us do it as adults, right? And some of us who do it as adults, we have heavy duty positions. Maybe some of us are called Kim Cheadle, director of Secret Service, and we're professional liars. I'm just looking yeah. at the audience and giving a very, you know, dry answer. Appreciate you. We got about 11 of y'all on Rumble and three of y'all on YouTube, man. Get the likes up. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. But you look at it, you're like, you did it on purpose. Like yesterday, my son and my daughter got into it, oldest son. He pulled her finger back. She was crying pretty hard. Moment I walked up, I did it. I shouldn't have done it. I, I messed up. Man. Okay. Now, that, it makes it kind of tougher to kind of uh, play uh, that versus, I didn't do it. I didn't touch her. I didn't do anything. I didn't do it. Okay. Do you look at this here, Sheriff, yeah, and do you say... Way, like, bro, I'm telling you, if you don't want to get too much of a harsh punishment, just be accountable. Like, accountability low-key throws a lot of people off. Because I was remember reading a book on... Uh, what was it? On how to influence friends and win people over and all that good stuff. Like, look, a lot of people don't like uh, taking accountability. And not just women. Women are the queens, bro. Women are the best at not taking accountability. But it is damn near human nature to not take accountability. So when you see somebody come off that off the rip with accountability, it is a bit off-putting sometimes. Hey, look, this is purely lack of in lack of experience, lack of preparation, lack of leadership. It was just a screw up. These guys messed up. Or do you look at this and have any ounce or percentage or doubt to say, Here we go. like literally, what I'm about to tell you, it, it's it's filled with liberal actors and actresses, okay, who believe we landed on the moon, who show the story of the movie is that the CIA came and hired a lady to showcase in a warehouse to point, like make it look exactly as if we're landing on the moon. If we were to not land on the moon, we would have to show this part of the warehouse just to prove that we did it before Russia. And by the way, this is a movie based on a true story. It's how they paint it. So it's to show, no, we definitely did land on the moon because we didn't need to use that footage because a black cat walked in. Then we made a movie about faking the moon landing. Like, come on now. Come on. Now. Just for shits and giggles, I think you need to watch it for your own, you know, good actors are in it. Channing Tatum's in it and uh, Scarlett Johansson's in it. And the, both of them are very, very good actors. Why do you think, you know, uh, if you go back, your uh, you're 72 I'm 45 I was born in Iran and um, you know I'm in America because of Jimmy Carter coming to you coming to Iran and saying Iran's the uh, island of stability mess takes place he leaves Khomeini comes in it just happens to be timed with a 25 year renewal of an oil contract that Iran had with UK US and all these other places that expired in 79 then you create that tension in the Middle East, then you put in Khomeini that comes in from France, then you get all these weird people to help him. Kissinger says, we're going to help you. Shaw, don't worry about it. And then Kissinger pulls out, doesn't help him out. Iran falls. All these beautiful contracts comes in. Next thing you know, a million people die, million to a million to five people die after that because of a war and you have to sell all these weapons. Yeah, how many people right now sit there and listen to that story and like, yeah, you know what? It's kind of weird. What happened? There's too many weird things that add up. You go to John F. Kennedy, too many things that add up. I'm not telling you I believe on what happened, but there's a part of me that's speculating right now. So first, again, to the community that believes it, I'm not there 100%. I'm there 10 to 20%. I'm 80%. It was purely an accident and they screwed up. I'm a financial guy. It's a financial advisor. I don't know, man. I'm, if you ask me, like, yo, 
Do you really think JFK was a whole conspiracy or was he killed by the uh, CIA? I would hit you with the, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I believe they took him out the game off, well, certain people's interest. And because he was opposing certain people's interests and he was trying to get rid of the establishment that we're kind of living under the tyranny of today. Advisor 20 some years. Oh, but, here it is. Job that were 18 people 10 years ago, but they're not now. Mm -hmm. Or that that's what you hope this investigation shows us because there should be no B team and C team. And, and I, once again, I defend the fact that I have worked with the Secret Service and I have seen the quality. There obviously is a huge failure here. I don't know why that investigation will tell us, but admit that there's failures early on and start to correct them and then release information as you solidify it through the investigation so the American people know what happened. If not, then of course it's normal to have the conspiracy theorist and go, well, why is it all ladies? Well, let, let me say this quite affectionately. The, I've got ladies on my team that have much more cojones than some men I know. Okay. Yeah, we all do know there are some female officers that can put it down, but I'm be real with you. Majority of them ain't doing nothing out there. And that's the problem. I ain't saying there need to be no women in law enforcement. No, no, not like that. But what I am saying is that we need to make sure we get the butches out there and not the little, you know, the sallies and all that. Nah, nah, nah. We need all the, well, lack of better word, we need all the lesbians out there. The butch-ass lesbians, yeah, we need y'all out there on the force. Right now, you're a person that doesn't believe in any of this stuff. If I type in right now Donald Trump, what do you think is the most common thing people are Googling right now with the first two names of Donald Trump? Probably the shooting. Okay, let's yeah. type it. Just, Rob, delete the other stuff, Rob. Just, just type in Donald Trump. Trump. Okay, and what do we see? Campaign events, campaign events, campaign events, Donald J. Trump. Okay, how about you go to the next letter? Let's do A, assassination. You type in A, nothing comes up. Type in S again, S again, A, S, nothing. Yeah, and they fixed this. They, yeah, Google actually fixed this, but this one was going on low-key prior to this episode like yeah if you looked up trump's assassination google wasn't trying to pull that up for you for some reason that's kind of weird so then the report comes out on who gave the most money to joe biden in 2020 election can you go to twitter please go to twitter and type in elon musk who just shared this okay and if you go to twitter elon musk's account and uh, keep going lower, keep going lower, keep going lower, keep going lower. It should come up, right? Keep going a little more. Uh, it's coming up. Two more. Right. It's coming up right now, right there. Zoom in. So this is 2020. Who gave the most? How many people donors gave to Trump versus uh, Biden? United States Postal Service, 240,000 gave to Trump. Alphabet, Damn. Google, 1.7. Hey, that's fucked up, bro. Come on. <laughs> The U.S. government could donate to its own candidate. That's hilarious. But, hey, at least some people put in for Trump, though. That's that's respectable. Huh, interesting, though. But here's the thing, though. Biden is heavily, way more heavily funded than Trump. And Trump is still leading. Million. Waste of money. Gave to Joe Biden. Why would Google, which is where we go, not put Donald Trump assassination attempt? You don't think that's a little weird? Sir, I mean, you know, you have no idea how many years I've been following. You probably don't know who I am. I know who you are, and I love the way you lead, and I love the way that you're a no-bullshit type of guy, that you come out and you, you know, what's that BS towel that you have? You're going to mm -hmm. throw the BS towel? I have that. I think this is, if you can pull up the BS towel, you're not at all tempted, tempted here to want to throw the BS towel the more deeper we get into all these weird things that are popping up. I don't know. I think if there's ever been a qualified time for you to drop the BS towel, some of it is now. But it doesn't look like you have any hesitation that anything's going on here with it. That's uh, nefarious. Right there. Zoom in a little bit. The BS flag. <laughs> I think this is one of those moments that we got to drop the BS flag. But you don't think so, do you? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, not yet. We made progress in 15 minutes. That's good. <laughs> we made just... progress. But you know why I say we made progress? Because, you know, um, this morning we're having a meeting and I took a couple of my guys out to lunch. We had a big screw up.
this week, just like in any business. You always have screw-ups, but this week was one department. I run nine companies. So on the insurance side, one week we could have compliance. I'm dealing with Department of Insurance. I'm dealing with lawyers. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. I'm dealing with marriage didn't work out. That guy got a DI over the weekend because he had a celebration. Yeah. He decides to drink too much. He goes out. So all these yeah. weird calls you got to take that just isn't necessary, but that's part of running a big business. That's a good-sized business. We go to a meeting today. And I take these guys to lunch. I said, so listen, the failure we had last week. Lie, bro. If I'm owning a business and I got to pull one of my CEOs out of a drinking binge, bro, if I got to do that to my CEO, then I have the right to whoop his ass as well. Like, nah, bro, you got me effed up. What caused it? I took a picture of it and I'll read you some of it, okay? On the points we wrote. And it was on the, this restaurant, I like to write stuff. Okay, number one, we didn't look at the data. Number two, incentive model was weak. Number three, we didn't make reference calls, three of them. We normally do. Number four is, uh, right. really, we're not making any adjustments to the RNC. Okay, uh, is, is there anything, was there anything when he shot the rifle, any residual effects that you guys go look at the stuff? No, we power washed it, pictures of the FBI power washing, all this kind of, kind of stuff, weird. But here's her being questioned. And one of the things, the two answers don't add up. Rob, if you want to play this clip, play the one first where she says, she doesn't, and then the one that says she does, whichever way you want to go, I'll let you lead the way. Now, since the assassination attempt, you are under oath, reminding you, have you communicated with anyone at the White House well, she don't give a damn. <laughs> on an encrypted messaging app like Signal? Yes or no? no? No, I have not. Are you willing to surrender your personal phone for analysis? Uh, if I am required to do so. Okay. Um, I will look into making that request because I would like to see your personal phone to see if you're uh, communicating over encrypted uh, messaging apps. No. Okay. Here's another one. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, that's a great question. Yeah. Let's look at that phone. Let's look at Telegram, Discord, WhatsApp, etc. Let's see if you've been really texting behind the scenes. Senator Bober asked earlier about using encrypted apps that you said you've not used, I guess, Signal. Um, are you have you used any encrypted app to communicate on, from your personal device? I do on occasion uh, use encrypted apps to communicate. Uh, so you use some form of an encrypted app to communicate with with people within the federal government, with local law enforcement. Whom whom are you communicating using encrypted apps? Uh, many times it's with colleagues and uh, and associates. So you're communicating with colleagues on a personal device. She's not allowed to. There are times that the Secret Service, when we work uh, internationally uh, with some of our partners, that they don't have the same texting capability. And you, you're not able to do that with your, with your. That's a real hole in security. Cause let's say I'm gonna play devil advocate, kid, and I, and I can honestly to say that yo. So what's saying that you wasn't texting certain people on the side to leave that that spot open, you know, on your private text message that we can't, you know, get to, but which is illegal, which you shouldn't even have anyway. So yeah. Your government issue device. Uh, recently, we have been able to uh, install some of those apps on government devices. Okay, um, let's talk about some of the things uh, you can pause it right that we can. What does that? What does that make you think about? Anything or not really? Now, he, here's. Let me take you back to the beginning, please. You remember me talking about professional law enforcement politics. and politics appointment? She was a political appointee. So, what was her job in the Secret Service before? I mean, she served some time. I can't answer that question. But it's obvious to me that she wasn't qualified to be in that position. When she's under that kind of questioning, I'm, I'm not familiar with that app, but certainly to suggest that someone in that high ranking a position would not be on an encrypted app in order to take care of of yeah national international i'm pretty sure the secret service has a good tech team to where they can have their own encrypted app so that their own encrypted text messaging service that could be monitored or subpoenaed at any time like yeah y'all should be able to have technology for that what are you using like public apps for or apps that's outside of your job national business that should never be intercepted because it could put people's lives at risk you know they have that why didn't she just say that well of course i've talked on encrypted apps that's that's how we keep 
sensitive confidential information, sensitive and confidential, so that the bad actors who are actively trying to attack us don't actively attack us. They deal with some pretty, pretty remarkably dangerous events when it comes to international terrorism. I, I'll, you know, I, at this point, I'll just move on. Because but why, why didn't she say that? I mean, listen, this is for me. I am trying to find out why this was handled the way that it was when when 20 years from now, when we go to movies, OK, and you're going to be around for a while because you're you're active, you're working, you're healthy. You'll be seeing movies in 20 years. When we go to movies in 20 years, Trump 98. Trump be 90 years old. Like, God damn. But shout out, though. Hey, man, T take care of yourself and stay working, man. This is this was going to work out for you. I swear to God, as soon as you retire, that's when you start getting old and senile. It's, and two, how do you address it? Sure. First and foremost, you know, Florida just changed their squatter yeah. laws, okay? Yeah. There was also a civil procedure in Florida to get squatters off of your property. And many police agencies across the state were saying, hey, it's, it's a civil problem. What? Much like you saw in California and New York. But that's why our Florida legislator legislature acted and gave a specific tool so you could move people out immediately. Mm -hmm. We never had that problem in Polk County because we would read the trespassing law, the burglary law, the vandalism law. And when we interact with a homeowner who said, I'm not in a business agreement with that guy. I didn't lease my house to that guy. Mm -hmm. I have never seen that guy. I didn't sign any of those documents. Yeah, so, and what he's explaining is there's immigrants coming over here, over the border, getting into houses, changing the lots, and, and the state, and some of these states are telling the land, oh, Lord, well, too bad, they're staying in there, you just lost your house, that you're still going to pay a mortgage on. And it's happening in New York, and they try to do it in Florida, but thanks to people like him, we're going to stop that. When he tells us that, and he will sign a sworn affidavit under oath, we locked that guy up that's broken into his house that was up for sale, and we lock him up immediately. Now, if the squatter is good, which most of them aren't, and they've dummied up paper and filed it with the clerk, it may take us a day or two to get all the paperwork together in order to arrest them. But 99 out of 100 of them, we would take them to jail in handcuffs that afternoon when we were called to the house immediately because it doesn't give you the authority to move into someone's house, to break into someone's house, to change that house into your name, to move the electricity in the, into your name. It doesn't give you the right. So we never had this problem that we have seen manifest in New York and California because yeah. we use criminal laws to get rid of those people immediately. But we're back to where we... And notice how we're talking about liberal blue states who are the ones letting these squatters come in and kick landowners, homeowners out of their own home. Like, really? Were in this I last understand. piece that we talked about on the shooting of Trump. It's incompetence. It's laziness. It's lawyers telling police chiefs don't get involved, make them go to the civil courts. Well, wait a minute. What about all these criminal laws here? So we've never had that. We didn't even have that problem before the Florida legislature changed. We as in Florida. We as in Florida. We as in Polk County. Some yeah. other places in Florida absolutely told them to go seek out the civil process. That's why Governor DeSantis, who's the greatest governor, that's why he... We're here because of him. He did a phenomenal yes. job. Yeah. And the Florida legislature changed that to give law enforcement more teeth. So, okay, so as a sheriff, how many other sheriffs around? Yeah, DeSantis ain't let COVID destroy the economy. He ain't let crime get out of hand. I ain't gonna lie, he's probably one of the best governors. The country are you in communication with as peers, like you talk to them? Sure. Is that pretty common? Oh, yes, and I, I, I am the past president of the major county sheriffs of America. I saw that. So I, ha I communicate not as much now since I'm the past president, but I have communicated with sheriffs all over this nation. On the opposing side of sheriffs who are dealing in a county where squatters have the protection more than the way we have in Florida,
crazy. Are these sheriffs that agree with the law or are they saying, hey, man, this shit is out of control. This is ridiculous. And those who are agreeing with the law, because politically, you're going to have sheriffs on the left. Well, let's shout out to our sponsors because protect, protect yourself with confidence. Head over to Palm, <laughs> PalmPepperSpray.com and discover the best in pepper spray on the market. POM leverages over 45 years of experience and offers the next generation of self-defense products. Palm's patent flip-top design ensures quick and easy access when you need it most. Don't wait. Shop now and equip yourself with the best pepper spray on the market. Visit pumppepperspray.com slash discount slash rumble 10 for 10% off your entire order. I'm going to say for you again, P-O-M-P-P-O-M-P-E-P-P-E-R spray.com slash discount slash rumble 10, 10% off the entire order. Go get you some now, man. Get your protection up. Get, man, hey, yo, get it for your girl or something, man. Come on now. You got to protect her from these immigrants. Let's go. The right, the center, even Fort Lauderdale, the sheriff here. I had lunch with him the other day. The chief of police here had lunch with him the other day at the house. Very interesting man to get to know him. What's the argument for people that think protecting squatters is a good law? Here's what I've found in government. Police administrators that don't know how to be police administrators mm -hmm. are, or are fearful of their job, they run to the lawyers. Central offenders, people who are online trying to groom our children and have sex with them. We yeah. set up stings. Chris Hansen comes down and joins us, if you remember back in the I day. I had him on, yeah. Chris, Chris is a good friend of mine. But the reality of it is, it feeds my soul. It makes me feel good when my detectives, who are the very best, arrest child predators. So I make sure they have the training and the resources. We partner with other agencies that can't afford to do these investigations because every moment of every day, there are people out there trying to groom and seduce and sexually batter your children. And we've saved untold thousands of children from the hands of sexual predators since I've been the sheriff. And we've had to step up because social media put the child predator. An easy access to the kids. Now these child predators can contact kids without the parent even knowing. But thanks to guys like him, thanks to sheriffs like him who actually care about the people Hey, a lot, a lot of that stuff get handled. And I, you could tell he's a 10 toes down, I need my hands on top of everything type of guy. And that's why his county, where his, the city he's that he runs is one of the, I ain't gonna lie, one of the safest cities in America, is one of the best well-ran cities in America with the highest approval rating of the police. That's why I had to low-key give you this, guys, because, bro, we want good police, bro. We, I ain't gonna lie, we need somebody like him. Like, yeah, 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 I know what he said in the beginning with the shooting 68 times stuff. I know, I know, that may turn you off, but kind of what we need in today's climate. And I'm, I'm trying to be real with you. When it comes to policing in the black community, well, we just need more black people in, in the police so we can start policing our own, you know, community. Now, that's as far as what I think there. But anyway, though, let me know y'all thoughts and comments, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. I'm heading out. Actually, no, I'll be right back with a dating topic. You know, I got y'all, man. This is Seven Saint Key Media, man. I'll be right back with another one. Peace.